Before you listen, if you enjoy the stories and want to hear more, please consider subscribing to the channel. Most of you listening are not currently subscribed, so take this opportunity to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to never miss a story. Thank you. The small village of Ardingley is located in the English county of Worcestershire. Nowadays, it consists of sleepy country lanes and charming Tudoresque homes. However, in the early 19th century, a gruesome and unsolved murder occurred in Ardingley that had occult undertones. On June 24, 1806, the Reverend George Parker of Ardingley Parish was walking in his fields in the late afternoon, trying to bring his cattle in for the evening. It was a swelteringly hot summer's day, marking the feast of St. John the Baptist, also known as Midsummer's Day in ancient pagan times. As many farmers were attending the Midsummer Fair in nearby Bromsa Grove, the village was particularly empty. However, Reverend Parker had chosen not to attend, and the reason for his decision is debatable but could be related to the pre-Christian history of the day. While walking across his fields, someone was watching Reverend Parker from a nearby thicket of trees. When he passed by the thicket, he heard something emerging from the bushes behind him. The Reverend turned and saw a masked man wearing a thick, long leather coat who aimed a shotgun at his gut without revealing his identity. The Reverend raised a hand in defense, hoping to stop the barrel full of buckshot with his bare palm. The Reverend pleaded with the gunman not to fire, explaining that he had a wife and child at home, and only a monster would harm a man of God. The masked man stayed silent and ignored the Reverend's plea. Instead, he fired his shotgun, hitting the Reverend's sternum deliberately. The masked man did not end the Reverend's suffering there, and then but kept him alive long enough to hear his agonized pleas for help. It's unclear whether the masked man communicated with the dying Reverend or watched in silence as he screamed in pain. The screams echoed for miles around, and the masked man did not finish off his victim with another shot. Instead, he picked up a large stick and bludgeoned the Reverend's skull until there was little left to recognize him. Fortunately, two butchers named Giles and Lynch were in the area and heard the Reverend's screams. They rushed to the scene of the crime, and upon realizing that the masked man had been detected, he fled across the field with Giles in hot pursuit. Lynch did his best to help the dying Reverend, but his skull had been so badly crushed that there was no chance of recovery. The butcher stayed with the Reverend and comforted him as he uttered his final words. Meanwhile, Giles chased after the masked man, unaware of the shotgun concealed under the man's long coat. As Giles closed in, the masked man appeared to slow down, fiddling with something at his waist. Seeing an opportunity to apprehend the criminal, Giles prepared to tackle him. However, the masked man quickly turned around, brought his shotgun to bear, and fired a deadly spray of metal shrapnel. Reacting quickly, Giles dropped to the ground just before the trigger was pulled, and the buckshot passed harmlessly over his head. Realizing the danger of continuing the pursuit, Giles stayed down as the masked man fled into nearby woods. When Giles returned to his colleague Lynch, they found that the Reverend had passed away, but not before managing to utter one final word. Midsummer. Given that the victim was a man of the cloth, the level of outrage in the community was off the charts. The locals demanded that the perpetrator be apprehended and descriptions of the crime and suspect were circulated far and wide in the hopes of locating him. The authorities took the matter seriously, even closing certain ports to prevent the murderer from fleeing the country. Several people came forward to say that the description of the attacker matched that of a local tradesman named Richard Hemming. When the sheriff visited Hemming's home, they found that he had been missing for several days. Convinced they had their suspect, the authorities scored the surrounding countryside for several weeks, but found no trace of Hemming. While finding Hemming was one thing, determining his motive was another matter entirely. The investigators soon realized that there was more to the murder of the Reverend than just a simple act of violence. It became clear that the Reverend was not well liked by his tenants due to his decision to raise their rent when he took over as landowner. However, this was only the tip of the iceberg. 
As the investigators delved deeper into the history of Ottingley, they discovered some unsettling facts. The area was culturally unique and isolated from the rest of Worcestershire, with its own set of rules and customs. The farmers paid a lower rate of tax and celebrated midsummer instead of traditional Christian holidays, which did not sit well with the Reverend. Despite his attempts to convert the locals to his way of thinking, they refused to abandon their ways. It was rumored that the Reverend raised their rent as a result of their defiance, which led to further resentment. It was possible that one of the tenants, motivated by anger and retaliation, killed the Reverend for raising their rent. Alternatively, his disdain for their religious practices may have played a role in his murder. Determining the true motive behind the crime was another matter entirely, and it would take further investigation to uncover the truth. However, there are those who believe that the date of the Reverend's murder may be the key detail in the case, shedding light on the dark, unholy nature of Ottingley Village. Some speculate that the Reverend may have been the scheduled midsummer sacrifice for that year, and that his ritual execution served a dual purpose. The long leather coat worn by the murderer suggests that it may have been a ritual garment worn by the midsummer executioner. This theory is reinforced by the use of a large stick as the weapon of choice, as the murderer could have easily killed the reverend quickly and painlessly, but instead chose to use a natural weapon, possibly as part of a rite or prayer. However, without apprehending the murderer, the true motive behind the killing remains a mystery, one that would take nearly 30 years to unravel. In 1830, 24 years after the murder, a groundskeeper named Charles Burton was working on Ottingley farmland when he stumbled upon a mystery that had plagued the village for almost a quarter of a century. While digging out the foundations of an old barn, he discovered a shoe, bones, and fabric, realizing with horror that he had uncovered a human corpse. Burton suspected it to be the remains of the murdered reverend and immediately alerted the authorities. Constables were dispatched to the scene, and they spent a cold, frightening night guarding the skeleton. In the following days, investigators meticulously examined the remains and objects found with them. The victim's skull was shattered into fragments, indicating a brutal and excruciating death. The similarity of this murder to that of Reverend Parker's initially suggested that they might have been the work of the same killer. However, upon examination of the reconstructed skull and cataloged belongings, investigators arrived at a shocking revelation. The skeleton belonged to none other than Richard Hemming, who was suspected of murdering Reverend Parker. So how did Hemming meet the same gruesome fate as Parker? According to the confession of Mr. Thomas Clues, it was the work of other villagers who wanted to keep the murder a secret. Hemming had apparently drawn the short straw when it came to deciding who would be Parker's assassin, and the plan was to meet up with other conspirators to confirm the deed. However, for some reason, Hemming was taken to a barn and attacked by his accomplices, and his skull was smashed to pieces. While this could be seen as a form of vengeance for killing a man of God, it is worth noting that Parker was not popular among the locals. It is possible that Hemming's ceremonial killing was part of a wider scheme of pagan sacrifice, as he himself had committed a ritual slaughter. Despite no one being arrested for the murders, Rumors persisted that one of the conspirators lived in fear of vengeful spirits until his dying day. Thomas Clue's confession was made on his death, but his refusal to identify the other culprits resulted in authorities threatening him with prosecution. Sadly, the elderly man passed away before facing trial, and the secrets surrounding Reverend Parker's murder were buried with him. However, the village of Ottingley endures to this day, and the conspirators likely had offspring who carried on their traditions. These unholy practices that resulted in the Reverend's death may have survived through generations, with each passing down their forefathers' bloody customs. It is a bone-chilling thought that one should avoid the country lanes near Ottingley in late July, lest they become the next midsummer sacrifice, with their final image on earth being that of a masked man in a long leather coat wielding the limb of an oak tree onto their skull.